What's going on boys and little guys here, welcome back to another video now in today's video we do have another walkthrough how to play the 442, in particular how to attack with the 442. If you've ever seen a video on a 442, um, custom tactics and instructions are my channel um, but this is the qu uh, brief quick overview if you want to pause at this each segment and use the tactics but again I have a complete dedicated video explaining why these tactics. Don't forget this is an aggressive formation uh, so we have just some ultra attacking slot. Um, this means that I'm going to be using this the entire game. And um, I think it's really important to give you a good understanding of how I play or how I like to use these players. And um, of course I do have the eye tracker on the screen. See that blob moving around? That is my eyesight. So you can see what I'm looking at and I'll kind of walk you through what I'm doing. I've got my controls at the bottom of the screen as well to let you know what I'm thinking. Anyway, let's get this game. Don't forget as well, um, before when you change to a formation, there is some time before the formation changes. So normally you have to wait for the ball to go out of play or you got to wait for someone to foul you like that. Um, There's a good anti-kickoff tactic from him there. Um, so the key thing is the wings. Um, the one twos is what you need. Um, also use this video as a kind of um, a backdrop, not a backdrop video, but use this kind of like a, in, as an information video. If you're ever losing in a game, or let's say you're playing weekend league and you're not doing too well, I would suggest maybe just using this video and keeping it there in the background. So every time you lose, come back to this video because sometimes when you're losing, you forget the most simplest things like, you know, doing one twos. You know, I would say when it comes to FIFA, the biggest mistake I see a lot of players make is they get frustrated. When they get frustrated, they don't do those one twos anymore. Even myself, when I get frustrated, you see I play very, very quick. I play quick normally, but I almost play too quick and that's where the mistakes come in. And obviously, don't forget with a 442 flat, there's no CDM. So you've got to be a bit more careful. Again, we're going to do a quick 1 2 down the wing. Don't forget, don't forget we've got the right center middle and join the attack as well. We see now, I don't normally cross there, but since it's a tutorial, I might as well cross there. Um, and that will make it 2 0. Bit, bit of an unfortunate start here for my opponent. Um, but and neither, nonetheless, uh, it is a game regardless. But yeah, so you've got to be careful with your CDM. Now, this is why I advocate the 4 2 3 1 instead. You have to use your lamb or your left left mid and right mid to defend as well. Because you see when you're in this position, your CDMs or your center mids are too far away. They're not like CDMs. So you have to use the L1 button and be able to be reactive. That's the thing. If you're playing a 4-4-2, in my opinion, if you're below gold one, just don't even use it. Because the truth is, unless you're losing, you can use this formation. But ideally, you need to be very, very reactive. You need to understand, okay, if I lose the ball, and don't forget, we've got the center mid on join the attack. As you can see, Renato Sanchez, he's on balance. So I got Cadrado on stay back. But when I'm in the attack opportunity, could, so as you can see, Renato Sanchez moving the ball forward. So I only got one CDM left. So for counters, you could be very much in deep trouble. Going to play a lofted pass over here, and that should be a shot near post. So just do bear that in mind. So when you are playing, do better mind. So the key thing is with building up and attacking is the one twos. The one twos back to your left backs to your right backs. The one twos in play. Don't forget you got four strikers and you got four. We got two wingers. Sorry, four strikers, but ends up becoming two wingers, two strikers. So with two strikers, you can play between them. Um, and I would say the second thing is don't panic. If you can't go forward, just go back. We've got a free kick in. I don't normally take free kicks, but I might just take one here because I actually think I got a pretty good chance for an They're going to aim just on the inside. Add some curve, and we're going to time it oh, off the line by Ronaldo. But like for example, like here, if you're in this situation and there's no one to pass to, just recycle the ball. Don't force the ball is what I would say, because sometimes if you force the ball, you'll find yourself that you'll be out of position and good off such of my opponent. Press the L1 button, as you can see with Neymar making that run. Now that's what's key. Everyone always goes to me, oh, it's the players. You have a quick fake shot here and should be a goal. Everyone goes to me, oh, it's the players that you have is the reason why um, you actually score these goals or your players made these magnificent runs. Well, of course, it's not um, the players. It doesn't matter what team you have. A lot of gold three players will see good teams and be like, oh, if I had that team, I'll be a goal one player. But a lot of the time, there's always excuse after excuse. At the end of the day, I'm the one that's triggering all these players manually. Do not forget, we don't have long ball on. Normally, for most of my tactic videos, I recommend using long ball. Um, but we don't have long, so as you see, we're going to counter, we're going to run back here, play safe. We're going to run back again, cover that run, cover the runner now, run and jockey now, down the wing. Run and jockey, watch the inside area, use our CDM now, run and jockey, cover the angle towards goal, and that was enough. You see when I was defending, you have to be very, very quick, quick, snappy and reactive. Quick one, two down the line, what's the same thing we're going to do? We're going to do a ball roll, can't make that pass here, so we're actually going to switch the ball this time. And as you can see on the radar, we've got four players in attack, we've got the... Winger, the two strikers, and the other left, the winger. So we have good distribution points, good triangles. Um, it's good to know this formation off by heart, you know, where everyone is. When you get the ball, you'll naturally know where players are. That was meant to be a ball, but unfortunately, it's holding the run button. 
Going to need to run and jock here. Maybe this won't be the best example, or maybe because I'm winning. Uh, but I only have one shot to record this video um, because of a tight schedule. But fingers crossed, it should be nonetheless entertaining game. Hopefully it does wake up later on. Again here, do one, two backwards. Let Neymar make that run. Ball roll um, to my centre mid. Ball roll again. Do a through ball down the wing. Take a touch away. I don't cross the ball in. It's just not my play style. So I pass the ball outside the box. And I end up recycling the ball back in. Look for Ronaldo. He's in a good position. No. So I do a quick one, two. Overmars makes that run. Can I pass the ball to Neymar? That was a bad pass. But I'm going to do a quick one, two. Neymar makes that run. Overmars. Nowhere to go. Quick one, two. He makes that run. Then I can keep recycling the ball. You see that? You see how space is being created just by my by me doing one two. It's all you got to do. Just keep it very very simple. And then when in the when I'm in the final third, I'm just using simple first time fake shots as I mentioned in my video. So the key thing is to look for the wing players, the left mids, the right mids, the strikers, the triangles are very very useful. Here you're going to use my my left back. Let him, not let him cut inside. A good pass. Here you go. Use my centre back here manually. Luckily my goalkeeper is in position there. So again the exact same gun thing. Oh, a bit risky over here. So what we're going to do is we're going to lob the ball to the opposite side. We can see our left mid is on the radar. So we're going to make a driven pass to him. And we're going to do a quick 1-2 backwards again. That 1-2 makes that run. Now he's created space for me. If I don't want to pass the ball to Overmars, that's fine. He's now controlling. Because don't forget, when you do this, this is a secret, right? But it's something that's so underused. When you do this 1-2, it forces your opponent to either be defensive. Either he comes towards you like he did over there, or he runs backwards. If he, if, if he runs towards you... Go ahead and make the pass. If he runs backwards, you've got more space to run into. And it's one thing that I'll say so many gold players, they really struggle against, like, you know, top tier opponents. Just do the one, two down the wing. I'm not asking you to do anything in particular. Just do that simple one down the wing. With CDM to cut the passing lanes here. Apply a bit of pressure on my CDMs. Um, use my left, my center mid now. Use my other CDM. Use my center back now. Um, as you can see, Gerard is right footed. So I let him take the shot. See that? I let him. I was like, you know what? Take the shot. I know you have. Um, a right foot, which is your strong foot. You have a three-star weak foot, or maybe a four-star weak foot. So I don't have to panic too much on that on that front. Uh, I'm going to, need to run the jockey here. I'm going to change to my CDM, and um, of course we have the striker on the comeback and offense. Don't forget, they as you see, Ronaldo just comes back a little bit. He's mainly on comeback and offense for the build-up plays. He acts like a centre forward. We're going to go for the final attack. If you believe in 45-minute goals, which in my opinion do not exist, um, there's so much human error in that. Uh, but if you really do believe in it, just hold the ball about 45 minutes and that way you guarantee the final attack. So if, for example, the chance does get squandered or something like that, um, um, if the chance does get squandered, um, at least then um, you can just, um, just if you, for example, kick the ball out, then that's fine. It ends up becoming just a regular uh, goal kick and then the referee blows the whistle. Um, anyway, we put that in anyway, that is uh, to the second half. In case you're wondering what that was, that was simple left stick dribbling. And yes, I was doing that in delay as well. Um, left stick dribbling is very, very good. They have nerfed it significantly this year in comparison to last year, but it was actually so, so effective. Um, as you can see, I don't intend to get the lion's share of possession as usual. If you're a new viewer here, understand I'm actually trying to record this live and talking about it and playing and speaking about what I'm doing before I do it. So obviously naturally when I have more of the ball, because I have to have that time to, to kind of say what I'm going to do. Um, kickoff, I like to use my striker with the 4-4-2. Um, I'll let him kick off first. I mean, this is not probably a good representation because we're 4-0 on the head now. Um, maybe not the best example, but I can use my striker and I'll run back with him for his kickoff. Don't break your back four. Use your two strikers, but that's it. Don't be, don't be too aggressive. Running here, playing it safe. And then here, once he gets past my midfield line, I use a running jockey and man mark the striker. If I need to um, tackle him and get a tactical foul, I will. Um, so if you're ever in struggle, so here we're worried. Going to use running jockey. Now, kickoff does... Add, ooh. What? Wait, wait. Why is that a penalty? I, I, no, no. That, that is... This is an example of... Wait, let me see this. So apparently, my, so I'm just going to move my goalkeeper left and right. Um, give him the pressure now. I'm going to go down the middle so he's probably stand still. Ah, well, good good penalty from him. I don't know why on earth that was a penalty. Um, but yeah, kickoffs do definitely exist in the game. Seems like um, this individual has he stopped playing. Maybe he has. I have no idea. Um, I hope he hasn't stopped playing because then video might be done at this point. Um, but I think he's actually stopped. Um, oh well. Oh no, he started, he started, I was going to end the video there, a lofted pass there, shot across goal, and uh, maybe he's going to, we're we going to call it crits. Um, listen, you, I'm not expecting you to blitz someone like this, um, there is no, uh, believe me, when I went into this game, 
I just literally turned on the game and went into it. It was probably maybe a bit unfortunate. I didn't, I didn't really match against the best of players in all honesty. Um, but that's fine. A couple of defensive mistakes really did co uh, really cost them the goals. Um, uh, but yeah, also I'll say just just focus on when you do when you lose the ball on the counter attack, try to run back with your centre mid first, recover the position, and then use your CDMs. You have to be really good at right stick switching. Yes, the pro players and all those top tier players use this formation. It's because they know what they're doing. They know how to defend themselves. Um, that's the reason why they use the 4-4-2 is a big difference. You know, when if a pro play is, is like is like is like imagine like what's probably a good example of giving this, right? Maybe like let's say Lewis Hamilton, right? Top Formula One driver, you know, you can give him, for example, maybe like maybe not the fastest of cars, and you can give like some average Joe the fastest car. Hamilton probably beat him if you're assuming that there's loads of you know curves and kinks and, and loads of turns in the race, because you can argue he knows how to exit those turns much better. It's kind of the same thing, same approach. Um, what, what I'm trying to insinuate here is that, yes, it's a very good formation, but only if you know how to really use it is one thing that I'd say. If you are, let's say, for example, you are winning, I'd recommend changing, for example, let's say, for example, like now winning, I'd recommend going to a more defensive formation like the 4 2 3 1. Um, the main reason why is you don't have a massive gap between your midfield four and your two strikers, otherwise, with the, with the kind of the 4 4 2, there's a massive gap between your two strikers and your midfield four, so it's inherently harder to defend. To go to this formation and play it a bit more defensive. Um, that's what I'd say. So as soon as you're winning, um, do that. Next thing I'd say is camera angles. Make sure you use the co-op camera angle. Again, I use 2010 um, custom uh, with the co-op. That way I can see everything. Um, it's very important you see the entire pitch with the 442. Again, you might say to me, oh, the pro players, this person uses. But the difference is the pro players, when they have the ball, they glance at the radar down every single five well, I would say every single three seconds, I would say. Um, I actually glance at the radar literally almost every se um, every couple of seconds when I'm playing Sirius. Um, but with the co-op camera angle, you can see much more of the pitch naturally, so you don't have to do it. But just do bear that in mind. Um, so yes, it is good, but the difference is they look. If you if you know you don't look at the, if you know you don't know where your player's off by heart, and this is our thing, right stick switching is actually easier with the co-op camera angle because you know where your players are in relative comparison to where the, your opponents are and where your other players are this is much easier to switch so again i'm going to run back here play a bit safe i'm going to bring my striker back now you can bring your striker back um, it does take a lot of skill to do this you it, it's all about timing i would say it sounds easy but it's really not because if you bring him back all the way too quickly i'm going to be a bit aggressive here with my center back they're going to use my center mid to cover that space as you can see center mid to cover the passing lane be a bit aggressive my center mid going to be still aggressive my center mid as you can see one in jockey, I'll aggress some other centre mid. And as you see, because I've got so many players massive gapping behind, I was trying to say your switching has to be on point, especially your L1 switching, man marking the strikers, knowing where the danger areas are, pushing your opponent away from goal, as you see, pushing him away from goal, letting him go away. As you can see, John Felix right footed, I know he's right footed, so I committed on his right hand side. It's all these things that you have to take into account when you're playing. One in jockey again here, left hand long stick, Eto is right footed. Now, if that was Dal Gleesh, it would be a bit difficult to hard to defend that. One in jockey here. And that's the key. Now, realistically, um, you might see some of the pro players, they just defend man-to-man -man, uh, with just one individual centre-back. So you might see Anders, by the way, i got a video on Anders. Um, uh, just kind of a, a brief analysis on what, what you could learn from him. Of course, I know you guys not, I don't want to become pro players. So, but there's certain things you could pick up from players like Anders. You know, he doesn't make mistakes. He's very, very calm on the ball. Um, he's very, very situational, I think. He makes the right choice. Of course, he does abuse mechanics, but it's his job. You know, he's a pro player. All pro players abuse mechanics. You know, they're not going to play like, you know, for example, I'm the kind of guy I don't like to score crosses. I mean, I'm with the goalkeeper here. Uh, you might see some exception, but I don't like to cross the ball. Do you think a pro is going to be like, oh, I'm not going to cross the ball. It's not a nice way of scoring. They're going to score whichever is the easiest way. It's about abusing the game. That's what it's like on the competitive scene. Um, but I'm not saying you should abuse mechanics, but I'm saying there's a certain things you can learn from them. Because I'll be honest, most of my viewers, um, you want to get better, I agree. But if you want to abuse mechanics, you're coming to the wrong channel. You're coming here to learn about the game, get a better understanding of the game, and that way you can be good for all FIFA. There's no point in learning an abusive mechanic, and then they patch it, then two months later you're down the line. That is the biggest mistake I see. Everyone looks for, you know, what is the most abusive mechanic, and then we just park the bus or whatever. Then come maybe two months later and they make a patch, then people start crying. You don't want to be crying. You want to be smiling. Bit upset when a patch comes out and adapt. We're going to use the goalkeeper movement like that. Goalkeeper movement is not, it's not important, by the way. But um, 
I still use it. But anyway, look, so we're 3-2 now, right? So I want to show this example. So look here, if you're in a normal game, change to the 4-2-3-1. And let's say you are lose, you're winning 5-3 and 5-4 and you need to win the game. you got to be smart. You can't be so aggressive. You've got to be more defensive. Think about defending first. I'm going to defend the area first. Um, if he gets one more goal, he's back into the game. So um, um, I'm just going to run and jockey, defend the areas. Don't let him score. Now I've got the ball. Be very, very smart. If you know you can't go forward, just go back. Am I asking you to pass the ball around your center backs? No, that's just pathetic. Don't do that. You can do that maybe in the last couple of minutes. But what I'm trying to explain is only make a pass if you're guaranteed to go forward. Because every single time you don't have the ball, it's your opponent chance to attack. Even if, for example, like over here, unless you know there's a guaranteed chance that you know what, you can get through down the wing, then go. Like for example, like here, De La Feu, can I make that pass guaranteed? Not yet. Just hold the ball here. And then when you see a guaranteed opportunity, like here, let's say Neymar makes that run. And I know, for example, okay, I can't pass to him, but I can pass to him. If you can guarantee these things, like I know that pass going to Ronaldo guaranteed, then of course you can do it. Ronaldo. Oh, twisting, turning. Ronaldo. Ah, a good tackle from Virgil van Dijk. Big man, big clunky man just comes in, destroys me like Ronaldo's nothing. But anyway, that is um, the game. Hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe you learned something, maybe you didn't. Um, the main thing was the build-up play, which was more, more important than anything. I wanted just to give you an insight, just to give you a brief overview on the goals. What did I do here? Quick 1-2. If I never did that 1-2, it would never have worked. Again, uh, pass the ball to my striker. And here's just carbon copy, you know, fake shot into that area. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a five-star skill move. It's going to be a normal fake shot. And that's all you need. Ben Yedder can do that very well. Again, what do we do on a wing? Create the 45 degree angle, driven through ball down the wing. Then here I crossed the ball. I never really crossed the ball, but obviously because it's more of an educational video, this is not really the way I want to play. Um, so that's why I crossed the ball there. I might be one of the few times you'll ever see me cross. Again, exact same thing. How do I trigger these players going forward with the L1 button and L1 trigger? And then once Ronaldo was going forward, I took a touch inside. See, I never forced it down the line. I went back inwards, wait for Ronaldo to go into a good position, made the pass Ronaldo. Then did a fake shot into the space or scoop. And then I scored the goal. Uh, most of my goals all derived from some sort of fake shot. And this was a really, really nice goal over here. A beautiful bit of left sit dribbling over here. Um, of course, moved a fake shot around the goalkeeper. I'm sure you'll know about this already if you watch my videos. And, um, but anyway, thanks for watching, boys. Have a wonderful Christmas. And if you have any uh, questions from 100k subscriber special, um, do let me know down below. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to stream on twitch.tv forward slash nilguides. Uh, link is down below in the description. Thanks for watching, boys. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.